Welcome to Python with Andrew. And um, in today's video, I'm going to talk about variables, global and local. <clears throat> I get a lot of questions from people saying, I don't understand this global versus local variable um, difference. So I'm going to attempt in this video to explain what a global variable is and a local variable is. But more importantly, when should we use one and when should we use the other um, so that we don't get mixed up and don't get confused? Might take a little while, but uh, let's dive right in and have a look at um, some code. The code yet, but uh, let's let's start with the uh, the video. So global variables are variables that can be accessed anywhere in the program. So they're used to store variable or values of, of uh, things and they're accessed anywhere in the program. So that's good because it makes it easy, but that's bad because it means we can, our code is less compartmentalized and less, if you like, modular. So on the whole, I don't think global variables are a particularly good practice. But there are cases where we want something that's true or something that's a value throughout the program or throughout the module, and we want to keep it that way. Now, I'm also talking about using global variables and not classes. I'm going to put that aside, and we can talk about objects and classes another day. Um, but for this uh, purpose of this, we're talking about global variables. So if I define a global variable, I'm going to call it globe var. And I'm going to just set it to a number 10. Okay, that means that uh, anywhere in the program, I can use that value. So down here in my program, if I um, print this out, as you'd expect, um, it will print the answer. Um, nothing, nothing fancy about that. I can also change it um, equals 20. And then I can print it again. And you'd expect it to go from being 10 to being 20. So far, that's how we generally think of variables, that we define them and then set them a value and then use them. Good practice is to put the global variables towards the top. Um, I think that's paramount. We could have a, an area where we'd use global variables. Now, we might use global variables where we have uh, some things that we want accessed throughout in all functions and it might be the um the, the high score uh, of a game it might be a person's score it might be um, some configuration uh, component so there's lots of times where we might want to have a global variable again be careful because if you have global variables it means that your code is less modular it means that whoever picks up your code must remember that you've got a global variable defined somewhere and it might change. So, so far, so good. Um, there's nothing uh, fancy about that. Now, what? Let's, let's look what happens if I create a function. Um, so let me get rid of these for the moment. I'll bring them back in a minute. But let's say I define a function, define print global, I'll, I'll call it print bar. And no, no parameters, and all it does is print the global uh, variable, okay? So again, although we're in a function, this has access to our global variables. So if I do print var, and I clear this, um, this is going to call the function, and then it's going to print the, the global variable. So, and we get 10 again. So, so far, so good. As I said before, the global is accessible throughout the program and also accessible without throughout the functions. Now, that doesn't even matter if I didn't define it at the top, which I said was good practice, and I defined it there. All right. I don't even get a message saying, um, this is not found 
because by the time I call the function, it is, um, if you like, uh, defined. Okay, so as long as it's defined when I use the variable, all is good. So it doesn't really matter whether I have them at uh, the top or the bottom. Again, I said good practice up the top. <coughs> if I don't have it, if I delete this, you'll see my editor already says that um, blow var is not defined. Okay, so it's saying you're going to use it in this function. You better define it beforehand. And of course, we have it there. So we can access this global variable um, at the bottom of our program, in our main body of our program. We can access it in functions. But here's something that's a bit different. If I define a function called define update var, okay, no parameters, and now I want to go um, globe, global var equals 20, you'll see already that my um, editor has highlighted or, or made it a bit duller to say globe bar is not accessed, all right? which starts to generally give us a bit of a hint that maybe um, we don't have access to the global variable to change the variable. So let's, under here, let's do update bar and then print bar again. So of course, what I want this to do is I want it to print 10, update it to 20, and then print 20, okay? So let's clear and see what actually happens. It actually produced 10 and 10, all right? And that's because the rules of Python say, if you're going to change the variable, the global variable in a function like I've done, I've, like, I've tried to do there, uh, you can't do that automatically because Python says, actually, I don't know if that's the global variable or whether you've created a new variable um, inside the uh, function. So I'm a bit confused. To overcome that, Python has a keyword called global. Right. And if you state that in this function, I'm accessing the global variable, then you can change it, all right? So again, a bit tricky, and this is part of the reason why I'm not a big fan of global variables. But if I now run this, I get 10 and 20. So I printed out 10. Then I went to update it, update variable said, oh, this global var is a global variable. So now you have access to it. We change it to 20, and then we come back out and we get, print the var, and we get 20. So we have the ability now to not only access global variables throughout our program, access throughout functions, but also change them within functions. Again, I'm not saying I like it, but we have the ability to do that. Okay, so that's how we use global variables uh, in there. Now, how would I prefer to do it? I would prefer to actually pass them into a function and do um, whatever we, whenever we want to do something, we pass it into the function. Or if we want to change something in a function, we return that value. That's how I particularly like doing it. So that's global variables. They're defined generally up top. They don't have to be, but generally up top. Some programming languages force you to do it up top, but um, Python doesn't. As long as you define it or give it a value before you try and access it, right? So that giving a value sort of creates it. So as long as you create it before you access it. And in case of a function, as long as you create the global variable, before you call the function which is going to access it. So there's our um, definitions there. Now, what's a local variable? Well, a local variable only exists during the time, the, the, the focus of that variable. 
So for example, and it's typically within a function. So if I do define um, update local, and I won't even do it as a parameter, and I set a local var equal to 10, right? and I can print local var, and I can change it to equals 20, and I can print it out again. So if I now, I'm going to take these away, I'll bring them back later. If I now go update local, right, what that should do is call the function it defines a local variable 10, then prints it out, then changes it to 20, then prints it out, and then comes back. So we should get 10 and 20. Let me change them so we don't get them confused. Let's call it 15 and 25, so we don't get confused with what we were doing with globals. So I do get 15 and 25 because those variables are local to the function. I can create them. I can use them. I can, as, as long as I like. But let's be very clear. Down here, if I try and print the local variable, already my editor is saying, hey, that doesn't exist. Right? It's not defined. Even though we're defining it up here, and equally when I run this, I should get an error. Right? Because What's happening is that local variable is only defined inside of the function. So only when I'm calling that function does that actually exist. As soon as I exit the function and come back down to line 21, it's deleted. It's gone. It doesn't exist. That's why when I try and print it, <coughs> I get an error message. Okay, so local variables are only what's called in scope during that function. And that's okay, right? And that's one of the good things because now I can define this function. I can have as many variables in that function, do whatever I like um, and uh, change it. But I know that it doesn't impact the main program. It doesn't impact variables outside that program. Of course, what I should do is if I wanted to return the local variable because I wanted to use it later, I can return the local variable, all right? And down here, I can, and I'm gonna call it uh, L var, not, um, I can return the variable, set it to a new, variable, which happens to be a global variable now, and now I can use that variable. So let me just run that, and then, and then I'll explain what's happened there. All right, so it does exactly what I want, which is it calls that function, goes into the function, sets the local variable to 15, prints it out, sets it to 25, prints it out, and then returns it. Whatever I assign it to, this new one called LVAR, is a brand new variable, and it's got a new value, which is the value returned by the uh, update local function. And now I can print this. So let's define which ones are which. Um, if I was um, going to, actually, let me try and annotate the screen. Let me try and. This one here is a local. Again, I'm using it local, local. Right? On the other hand, uh, if I change my color, that's a global up there. Oops, didn't change the color. That's the global up there. No, can't seem to. Let's, let's use exit. Um, that's 
a global there. And down here, that's a global, and that's a global. So I've got some local variables and I've got some global variables. Okay, and that's that's okay. Okay, so it gets a bit trickier from here because the question is, what happens when we pass values into a function? What happens then? So let me clean up my, let me just take this all away. I'll just save it over here just in case I'm going to bring it back. And let me define a function called... Um, update local and this takes one parameter right and I'm going to call it a function variable okay. now the question is is function variable local or global and so if I do function let me actually print it out print function variable um, <coughs> and down here if I go update local 20 okay, clean that up I get the answer 20 which is what you'd expect now when I define a um, parameter in a function, it is local to that function. I cannot access it down here. I could not access, I can't go print function, uh, was it there, var? I cannot do that. As you can see, I get the error message already. It's not defined, okay? So that's a local variable. Even though I'm calling it with a value, that's a local variable. So parameters in a function are local. Variables that are defined within a function are local. Now, that doesn't stop me returning that value, right? because that's a totally different, I'm returning the value of the function, and, and that's fine. But it's important to note that you have global variables at the top, then you have local value variables in a function, and then you have local parameters. Well, parameters are local to that function is a better way of describing that. Okay, so I hope this uh, explains a bit about the definitions between global and local and when to use one or the other. As I said right up front, my personal belief is that you should limit the number of global variables uh, you have. You should use functions and pass them, uh, pass values in as arguments, return values from functions, and try and keep the functions as uh, local as possible, and not have uh, global variable, not have many global variables. That's my personal opinion. It makes your code much more readable, much more uh, understandable. Well, thanks for uh, taking your time to have a look at this. I hope it's helped. Let me know in the comments uh, if you have any other questions. Uh, otherwise, hopefully you can subscribe and uh, have a great day.